Welcome guys to yet another Romsky video. Today is going to be a very, very special video because of a recent terrible experience with traveling. I get to bestow upon you the wisdom that I've gained. So this video is basically just going to be about traveling with figure skates. How do you do it? What to do? What not to do? And how to ensure that every time you travel, your skates will come with you or at least give you the best chances of them coming with you. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. I'm going to put timestamps throughout the video just so that like it all makes sense. So I'll start with the story first and then the tips on what to do and how to ensure that you get your skates. I do encourage you to listen to the story because it does answer a lot of the unknowns. But if you really want to skip to just the tips, go right to the tips. So this is going to be story time. I was supposed to do Warsaw Cup because my season is not panning out the way I want. Injury, recovery time being longer than I thought, taking the time to do it properly and healthy. Finally, I felt better and good enough that I could compete on the international stage. Long story short, I did not get to participate in the competition for the honestly a really silly and frustrating reason. I had no skates. When you don't have skates, it is difficult to skate. When I'm traveling to Europe, typically I'll connect. I'll go to one of the Frankfurts, the Munichs, one of those big hubs, London, Amsterdam, and then you'll connect into your next flight. So typically a trip for me in Europe is two flights. Figure skates, being that they are blades, presents a problem with air travel. Now, if you're traveling in Canada domestically, you'll have basically zero issues. If you search up on the Canada website and the airline doesn't matter. Don't even read the airline suggestions because in my experience, people who work at the security checkpoint don't care what the airline says. They don't care for your federation letter. They don't care you're going to an event that's like, this could be the most important event. This could be a figure skating competition to solve world peace. They don't care. It's not going to happen. They will follow whatever protocol they're used to following and it is what it is. That's in my experience. Maybe, you know, your mileage may vary and your experiences might be different, but in my experience, they can take, they take that paper and they use it as toilet paper. They actually don't care. But if you read on the Canadian security, they have a very vague description where it says, skates with removable blades are not permitted in carry on. Define removable. They're probably referencing more of the hockey skates that have the blade that comes right off, like really quick release and not screws, but that's kind of vague. I don't like that language. But I will say, domestically in Canada, you will have almost no issues having the skates in your carry-ons. And this also applies if you're flying direct to international, you're fine. If you're flying in the States, 99% of the time, you're fine. If you're flying from Canada and connecting in the States, you're fine. South America, I don't know. But going direct to Asia, also fine. Going direct anywhere, you're okay anywhere in the world. Once you connect, all the rules go out the window, gone. Okay, you can't rely on anything, unless you're connecting in the States. I'm telling you, North America, pretty good with it. Anything else? No. Yeah, so Asia, Europe connecting, it's a pain. So I was connecting through Munich Airport in Germany. My layover wasn't very short. Between Tracy and I, we were traveling with four bags. One out of the four arrived. Wonderful. It's not the first time this has happened. Typically, you know, a bag gets lost. It's fine. Usually comes the next day. I wasn't even worried about it. Couldn't even like stress even a little bit. I was like, yeah, it's fine. I'll come tomorrow. I'll do practice. It's fine. Had it happened before. Really fine. I checked my air tag because I did travel with air tags in the bag and I saw it was in Munich. So I was like, yeah, it's in Munich. Totally okay. And Lufthansa has like a, a tracking app. When we checked in the bags, the individual that checked our bags in mixed our names up. So the two bags that were on my name went on to Tracy's name. And then the two bags that her two bags were checked under my name, which, you know, typically is fine. Nothing actually is wrong with that. Like, whatever, you know, your bags are your bags, your bags are my bags, my bags are yours, whatever. You know, typically that's fine. But in the scenario where you actually lose your bags, it becomes a logistical nightmare to find them. Because when we arrived in Warsaw, you add language barrier into that. When we explain the description of the bags, all the descriptions got messed up between the bags because they're on the wrong names. So everything got messed up. So then the tracking was really off. You couldn't tell which bag was which. And so it was a bit of a mystery. I kind of knew which bag was going where because I have an air tag to cross check with it. But yes, so 
that's that's yeah you should not have that happen but the saga continues when looking at the tracking tracy's bag never left toronto so two bags were still chilling in toronto so they sent them on the flight on the next day, looked at the tracking, everything checked out, and we went to the airport to go pick them up. They notified us that they found two bags, but the one bag that I was looking for, the one bag that had the skates, they still had no idea where it was. I knew where it was, I could see my air tag in it, but they had no idea where it was. You know, these things happen. Still, not stressing out too much. Uh, we went to the Warsaw airport the next day to pick up the two bags that they said that they found. Turns out they only found one bag great uh, it's a day after my flight and now we have two out of the four but still no skates uh, another day passes uh, no updates on luggage i keep calling i'm trying to figure it out i see it in my air tag i'm telling them i see it in munich airport you guys need to go get it they can't find it i see it in munich but they don't know where it is great so i'm looking at the clock looking at every flight that it could possibly come into it just never comes two bags two bags gone pixie dust gone. Once the event started, we just rebooked our flights and I went back to Munich because I need these skates. Like I, like I need them. You know, I have, a, I have Croatia coming up. I needed, I needed to go get the skates. So we rebooked the flights, went to Munich. We called up Munich ahead of time. They told us where to go, what to do. And a really helpful individual helped us talk to them just to make sure there's no like language barrier. We, we did what we could. I showed up to Munich airport. I said, listen, I'm a figure skater. I missed my competition because I lost my bag here. They're like, oh, figure skater. We have a bag with skates in it. I'm like, it's probably mine. So yeah, I walk in into this room that's not, not a big room, but just, I don't know, 150, 200 bags. They're just there, just chilling with unknown bags. So we find my bag and we also find Tracy's missing bag. And so the story is wild. I kind of had a suspicion this was the case. The actual luggage tag ripped off of the luggage of both bags. That's two for two. So now if you rewind for a second, this happened twice, two days in a row, because the initial flight, my two bags left. Tracy's bags stayed in Toronto. They never left. So on my initial trip, two bags left and only one arrived because the tag ripped off. And so now they have a bag with, with no identification of what it is. They send Tracy's two bags the following day, right? Because they never sent it. The same exact thing happens. One bag makes it. The other bag, the tag rips off, is stuck in Munich. The only reason I would know that it was still in Munich was because of the AirTag. If I didn't have the AirTag, I would have... I had no skates. No skates, no costumes. That was probably a mistake. I should have kept those in my carry-on, but... That's beyond the point. Twice. Happened twice. That's crazy odds. This is like supposed to be rare. From back to back days, the same scenario happened. Two bags, one of the two arrived because of a rip. Two bags again because of a rip. I'm like, what? That's so weird. So here is where we get to the part where I give you the steps on how you can make sure you arrive with your skates all the time. Every time. Most of the time. Number one bring the skates with you on the plane when possible. I think that's a no-brainer. Unfortunately, if you're connecting, it's just a nightmare because you can try. You can really try to bring on a connecting flight, but then if they force you to try to check it in, now you're worried about missing your flight because what if you don't check it in in time? If you check it in late, maybe it doesn't make the cutoff time anyway. It still doesn't make it to your destination. It's just when you're connecting through Europe, it's challenging. Actually, in hindsight, in my scenario this time, I could have because there was no security checkpoint between my connecting flights, which typically there is. How do you find that out? I have no idea. I have no idea how you'd find that out. If you guys know how to find that out, if there's a security checkpoint between, let me know because it's just like, I tried looking online, but there's no way to know. If you are going through a security checkpoint and you have skates with you in Europe or in Asia even, good luck. Good luck. You're, you're good, good luck getting through there. And then when you don't get through there, sometimes it'll happen. Very rarely, but I've heard people where it went, they went through and it's fine. doesn't matter what letter you give them. You can give them the letter of the airline. You can give them the letter of your federation. You can give them the letter of the, from the Pope. It doesn't matter, right? If the guy at the checkpoint doesn't want you to put skates in the plane, he won't let you put skates in the plane. And, you know, you can make a scene and do all this, but it's just, in my experience, it doesn't work. And then you got to go check it in. And then if you, again, you check it in, you miss your flight. I don't know. Sucks, but... If you can bring them on the plane with you, bring them on the plane with you. 
If not, here are your next steps. Get an AirTag or something similar, Android equivalent. Having an actual physical tracking device is your like last defense against losing that bag. And you know, skates, I'm lucky. I get hooked up with skates, so they're relatively easy for me to replace, but they're expensive, right? You don't want to lose those things. Sometimes, like in my case, the airport will have no idea where your skates are, no idea. But if you know, then you can kind of figure out, track it down and find it. My choreographer lost his bag ones for like a month. I don't know what, two, three months. They couldn't find it. What is that? So he didn't have an air tag, but if you have an air tag in there, you know, you can track it down even though the airliner can't. So that's your last line of defense. Get an air tag or something similar of a tracking device. Okay, this is, I think, I'm losing count already, but I think this is three. Um, and this is a weird one. Uh, number three, when you check in the bag, make sure everything is to code. Okay, make sure the bags are on the right person's name. Don't get it mixed up. I know typically it's fine, nothing actually happens, and the person at the desk might say the same thing. It doesn't matter, you guys are traveling together, but logistically it becomes a nightmare when something goes wrong, right? When everything's smooth, it doesn't actually matter, but when things go wrong, things go wrong. The other thing is, typically on a luggage tag, there are actual stickers that are additional barcodes of the same luggage tag, you stick them on the bag. So then even if the luggage tag rips off, you still have the stickers on the bag to identify the bag, where it's going, whose it is, which is weird to me. They didn't put it on my luggage bag this time. And I asked them about it and they said, we don't do that. And I was like, what do you mean? Because I, I asked afterwards about it and they said, we don't, we don't use that system. We don't put stickers on the bags. I was like, what? That's like, you have to, you know, like if that luggage tag rips off and then they, they made the claim that, oh no, that luggage tag can't rip off. It's so durable. Happened twice, like back to back days. Make sure those stickers, those backup stickers are there. Okay. They're actually really vital to like finding your bag when the luggage thing rips off. Inside your bag, they told me this and I didn't think about this. Inside your bag, not on the outside. Cause I see this, I see people do this all the time. You really shouldn't be doing this. On the inside of your bag, put your information, your name, your phone number, your email. And if you're really like, you're okay with it, put your address down. You don't need to put your address down because they will contact you. If they find a bag that they have no identification, they don't know where it's going, whose it is, they will open the bag and look at the contents for a bunch of reasons. A, for security to make sure nothing's crazy in there. But then they'll look inside and they'll find the, the information then they can contact you when they find your bag. I didn't have that. I know people, they stick the information on the outside of the bag. That I don't recommend. That's your personal information. You don't want that exposed. There have been cases where people will find a bag with the address and they will know that you're traveling and not home and actually target you for different types of attacks, whether it's burglary because they know you're not home. Keep it on the inside of the bag. Don't put on the outside of the bag because it's like a little sketch. Is it likely to happen? Probably not, but just for your safety, keep your personal info in the bag for when they investigate the bag. Don't keep it on the outside. It's just, it, it's not any more effective. Uh, another one, which I'm gonna start doing now, travel with two pairs of skates. I know this is not really an option for most people, but if I'm carrying two bags, I'll have a pair of skates in each bag and hopefully one of them makes it. And I'll be honest, I'm not one to skate in multiple pairs of skates. It's just purely a backup, a usable backup. Uh, the other thing is I have custom orthotics in my skates. I'll keep those in the carry-on and then I can choose whichever skate I want. I have tried skating in multiple skates before where you kind of like train with one and like alternate. My problem with that is not every skate is exactly the same, especially the boot. The tolerances on blades are extremely tight, like like very tight tolerances. The boots, they're different. Every boot's a little bit different. How the boot interacts with the blade is a little bit different. So I personally, I'm not good at switching back and forth between two sets of boots and two sets of blades. So I typically don't do that. I train in one boot and one blade. I know some people have suggested shipping the boots ahead of time. That's not a very, 
again, not a very practical situation because again, you'd need to be able to shift between two sets of skates. That doesn't really work for me. You know, everyone's different. I wouldn't be able to do that. What do you do when you ship the skates and then let's say the trip gets canceled or something? Your skates are there. How do you get them back? It becomes becomes another logistical nightmare because then your main pair of skates are gone. But then you have another event. You got to get that main pair back. So I know people have done shipping skates. It's not a thing for me. I guess your final option would be at an event to get a new pair of skate and blades or borrow someone's skates and blades, which I've had people actually offer me at that event to skate in their skates. The chances that someone has the exact same boot, the exact same blade, the exact same size, the exact alignment, the exact orthotic, it's zero, zero percent chance. It's so specific and so like personal. It's like underwear. It's more, it's literally, there's way more like tight tolerances and, and, and like special fitting than underwear, okay? That it's hard, so you can't really just like grab a pair of skates. I know people have done it. I've heard all the stories. I'm fresh off an injury. I'm not that desperate to just grab on a pair of skates and hurt myself again. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. So yeah, that was my trip to Poland, and you know, it was a learning experience for me. Hopefully, a learning experience for you guys as well. Without any further ado, I let you guys to it. I wish you guys the best of luck of traveling. I wish myself a little bit more luck traveling as well. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video.